We've been working very hard on DM Hub's character sheets, improving them by adding these tabs so that you can browse through different areas of your character sheet easily. And in particular, we've done a lot of work on this spell section of your character sheet where you can set up your character spellcaster. Now I have this character who is destined to be a cleric, but right now he has no class chosen. And so if I go to the spell section, it just invites me to add some custom spell casting, which I can do if I want, and it'll ask me for the details of my spell casting. Um, but what, what you want to do more often, and what, what I think is much cooler, is if you go and you make him a, a, a cleric, uh, so he's a level 1 cleric now, uh, he will now know the basics of, of cleric spell casting. So this, this tells us that he should know three cantrips, and he, he should be able to prepare three spells. Uh, and it will also tell us the DC and attack bonus for his spellcast. And we can get spells from our cleric spell list, and it automatically shows us the spells he's eligible to get. This is something that I tend to find very confusing when I'm setting up a character. Like, I'm always, which which spells can I can I actually use? And I have to browse and look up all the rules. Um, so I, I, we've tried to make it as easy as possible to set up your spellcasting. Uh, and so you can just get your your spells and you can drag them over. So I'm setting up, I'm getting cantrips and it shows me where I can drag them. Uh, I can I can also rearrange them as I as I like to make them look, look in an order that makes sense to me. And then I can do the same with spells. So I can browse through the spells and I can uh, can choose some spells, uh, drag them over, uh, and I have my my spells uh, all set up. Um, and uh, and w once I've done that, they'll be they'll be good to go on my character sheet. I can actually cast my sacred flame on somebody if I want, uh, and they're they're all good to go. Additionally, uh, if I uh, I haven't set my subclass yet, so my divine domain. So if I choose a life domain, uh, life domain characters get uh, get some some spells that they automatically know, and DM Hub knows all about this, and it will automatically give you these life domain spells. And these these are immutable; you can't you can't remove them or add to them or anything because they they come with your, your subclass. You would want to edit your subclass if you want to uh, somehow change the rules. Uh, additionally, uh, DM Hub works with with leveling up your character. So if we suddenly magically level this cleric up to a level six cleric. We will see that if we go back to spells, uh, he gets he gets an extra cantrip, um, which clerics get at this level, uh, and then uh, he gets um, he gets some more life domain spells, and he gets uh, some more spells that he can uh, he can prepare. Uh, and then also it'll auto also tell us that he can now because he has spell slots of level three and below, uh, he he can cast um, uh, uh, up to level three. So it'll show us. Um, spells up to level three. Um, and then if if for some reason uh, we we feel or our DM feels we should be able to have spells that are outside of our cleric spell list or above level three, we can just check this and it will show all spells. Uh, and so we can uh, we can just get any spell and uh, it'll be grayed out, but DM Hub will still obey if we if we tell it that we want to add it um, because because DM Hub doesn't know all the rules that you're using. Uh, and you can also uh, search for search for spells um, very easily. So, uh, who who doesn't want a good? Um, so uh, so so you can see that it, it very nicely lets you lets you set up your spells uh, like that. I'm going to show you that uh, how this all works sort of behind the scenes. If you go into your compendium uh, and you look at the cleric class, uh, you'll see that at level one. They have this cleric spellcasting feature, and this is done with a new modifier that we've added called the spellcasting modifier. And the spellcasting modifier lets you uh, le uh, lets you choose like which class the spellcasting is for, uh, and this will be chosen automatically if you're making a class normally. But but if you if you were like adding a spellcasting feature that you somehow got from some item, like maybe some item lets you cast spells as a cleric, you could. Could uh you could do this to to make it so that from some other means in the class you get a spellcasting feature cast that like that class. Um, you can choose the the attribute that your spellcasting uses, uh, which spell list you cast off of. Which again, this will default to your being the same as your class if there is a spell list with the same name as. But like um, especially subclasses don't have their own spell list. So if you're an Eldritch Knight. Uh, then you would want to pick the appropriate spell, uh, spell list to cast off of. Uh, and then there's spell leveling, which uh, which 
dictates how many spell slots you get from each level is the main thing this dictates. And things like wizards and clerics uh, are normally called full spell casters, um, while uh, classes like paladins and half spell casters, and normally subclasses give you um, give you just a third. So every three levels you go up is like a, a wizard say going up one level. Uh, and then there's custom. And if you choose custom, you don't get spell slots automatically, and you have to add some kind of feature as well to give yourself something that you can cast things with. And that is mostly for the warlock. Uh, we'll use custom uh, spell level. Uh, and then there's your preparation, which you can be prepared or known, and this shows up on your character sheet. We don't enforce this right now, but uh, according to the rules generally, uh, classes that prepare their spells can switch them out whenever they take a rest, uh, a long rest, while classes that know their spells uh, can only switch out one every time they level. Uh, and then we have uh, we have uh, formulas for cantrips known and spell, uh, spells prepared. Um, what what is very cool about uh, that we've done is uh, is these are in in anything anytime you see a formula now that has the the goblin icon next to it, it will it will often start off as just a text formula. Um, but what you can do is you can say this is like how many cantrips do you know. So we can uh, we can check this and we can say well I want a table by cleric level which which DM Hub automatically guesses that that's what you might want. Uh, you can also do a custom table um, if you. Uh, but table by cleric level automatically sets it up as saying well your cleric level is here. So at level one you know you know I think the correct rule is three cantrips and then at level four you know uh, I'm I'm not sure if this is but I'm I will type this in. Um, just to show as an example, and you can, can do something like this. And uh, and what you can do is you can you can this can take a formula, any formula that you choose. So you could decide that after level seven they actually add their wisdom modifier. Um, but yeah, as, as you can see, this is very nice. So any any time you have a formula, you can you can choose to make it a table, which is also very nice for like upcasting spells. Um, it's very very nice to be able to table and not have these like if level is one then do this if level is four then do this and then um so so you can see that that is very nice and flexible now uh for, for the wizard uh you you may have noticed that uh the the spell casting had this special uh this special attribute down here if they have a spell book uh, and and this is this is mostly for the the wizard class, um, because what we do is uh, if we look at this wizard um, uh, spells, he's a he's a level he's a, he's a level. Let's send him back to a level one um, to to simplify things a little bit. So wizards they they can prepare cantrips like normal, but when they prepare uh, spells according to the rules, um, they are meant to uh, they are meant to uh, record spells into their spellbook, and their spellbook starts with six entries, in, and as they level up, it it gains more. And the entries in the spellbook are meant to be permanent. Uh, and then when they uh, when they uh, uh, rest, they can they can prepare spells from their spellbook, uh, and they gain them. So uh, so now now we we add add that and let you keep track of your. Uh, we've also gone through and we have made it so that all of the standard monsters that we ship um, with DM Hub uh, have, uh, like this is the priest monster, not a cleric, a priest monster who's based heavily on a cleric. If we go into her, uh, her spell sheet, we can see that these are all of the spells that a, a cleric is meant to have. Uh, uh, so, sorry, that a priest is meant to have a priest monster, um, and we can see that they're they're all good to go, uh, and you can you can swap them out um, if if you want to, uh, and the the other thing that you can do that is uh, is very cool is that you can uh, we have this little button for randomizing them, so if you press this button, what it will do is it will randomize all of her spells, but it will still select them from the cleric spell list, uh, and it will also maintain the level. Of the spell, so it'll randomize them, but it'll keep the flavor of her still being a priest. It won't give her a spell that doesn't seem really un unpriest-like. 
so I, I think this is just a fun way to do things. You can also randomize cantrips as well. Uh, and I, I just think it's fun, especially if you had a, a temple perhaps with a bunch of priests in it. You might you might give them some flavor by uh, they wouldn't be quite so formulaic in the way they behave if they each if they each have uh, uh, a different set of spells. And as as a dungeon master, I think uh, that it'll be a lot of fun to sort of let that guide how I make the priest act. Because if I'm like, oh, this priest has this spell. Um, in in a battle, it can really uh really inject some some interesting interesting randomness uh into uh and uh, it, uh very nicely that also works on characters and if you do it on characters uh uh it will fill in any spell slots that they uh that they haven't gotten filled and it will do it with a nice leveling um just like that. Uh, now we also do handle multi multi classing. Um, so here we have a uh, warlock paladin that I have set up, and with a multi class character, uh, you'll see that uh, that they have uh, different features for each of their classes. So he has warlock spell casting, and then he also has paladin spell casting. Paladins don't get cantrips. Uh, just spells, uh, and you'll see that they can they can set up their spells, uh, and ev everything works as you would expect. Uh, in, in accordance with the rules, you can even learn a spell twice, once for each class, and it will show up for you twice, and you can cast it as a warlock spell or as a paladin spell. Uh, in this case, and it will have whatever whatever rule difference uh, are appropriate. Uh, something else we've added uh, is a uh, is innate spell casting. Uh, and so innate spell casting is like when you get to uh, have a character that, say, can can cast a certain spell uh, once per day, uh, one, once per long rest is normal for, for characters. Uh, and we're going to make this character a tiefling instead of a human, um, because tieflings get uh, this infernal legacy trait, uh, which means that they know the thaumaturgy cantrip, uh, and then when they acquire enough levels, they also gain hellish rebuke um, and and darkness. Uh, so if we go if we go here, we'll see that uh, that uh, our character, who's level six, indeed has these spells, and it tells us how often often he can cast them, um, and they they all work just. Uh, and then you can you can if you want to add if if for some reason you get more innate spells, you can add them here, um, and that is a lot more useful for monsters and characters, which I will uh, I will show you in a minute. Uh, and so. Uh, so if we go to the green hag, um, is an example of a monster, and a lot of monsters have this, um, they have innate spell casting. Um, so the green hag, uh, she can cast these different, uh, these different cantrips at will, uh, is what her character, she says. And, uh, you can, you can add, uh, you can add or change out, um, the, uh, the innate spells that a monster can choose. So and so, all monsters start off with um, with an empty innate spell casting. So if you wanted a goblin who happened to be able to cast some spells, you could you could give the goblin the capability to cast light, and now the goblin casts this. Uh, and you can uh, you can configure this. Um, also, uh, you can change the attribute firstly that they use um, just by clicking on it. It cycles through them. Uh, and then you can also change, um, uh, she can cast this at will. You can say, okay, she can cast it a number of times per day or at will. And I can say, okay, she can cast this three times per day. Uh, and then, of course, it'll track that on your number. Um, when you... um, so as you, can, as you can see, uh, we've, we've done quite a lot of work on, uh, on spell casting in DM Hub. Uh, and this takes us from a situation where we sort of could just basically put spells on characters to a full-fledged system where we implement most of the rules uh, for spellcasting. I do hope you're able to try it out soon, and I hope to hear your feedback.